Hello everyone, welcome to my The Young and the Restless Homies official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Maria thrived in her new work at Sharon's relaunched athletic club. Maria greeted members of the press in the dining area, explaining that the kickoff will be a celebration rather than a press junket. Tessa helped Maria deliver a placard wrapped in brown paper. Tessa expressed her want to learn more about the mystery object, but Maria stated that it was a surprise that Sharon will reveal shortly. Maria instructed the server to hide the poster in the lounge. Maria kissed Tessa and told her that she would have to wait like everyone else. Even at Chancellor Winters put off making choices on initiatives Billy was keen to adopt. Devin said that he had not had time to consider all of the implications. Billy recalls Nate becoming disillusioned when his ideas were not widely adopted. Billy reminded Devon that, unlike Nate, he had many years of expertise. Devon responded, I am aware of that, Billy. However, success is not guaranteed. Billy warned Devon not to wait too long because some of his ideas had an expiration date. Devon insisted he wouldn't be rushed. Chelsea and Abby appeared, dressed in sparkly outfits. Billy informed Abby he hoped she could get Devin to leave the workplace early because he could need some fun. Abby mentioned that she and Devin will be attending Sharon's new company launch party. Chelsea responded, Us too. Double date? Devin's facial expression revealed his negative reaction to Chelsea's invitation. Devin pretended to have emails to attend to, so Billy and Chelsea left. Abby inquired about Devin's experience working with Billy. Devin noted that Billy was accustomed to working with Jack, but he expected Billy to adjust. After Billy and Chelsea exited, Chelsea inquired about Devin, observing that their relationship had appeared strained. Billy mentioned that he and Devin had different business methods. Billy confessed that Devin had been aloof, not expecting him to return to the company at Jill's request. Billy informed Chelsea that Devin had more autonomy when he worked with Lily and Jill. Billy pointed out that Devin would have to adjust to his and Nate's homecoming, as well as the arrival of Mamie and Chance. Diane and Jack dressed up for Sharon's new business venture launch party at the Abbott Mansion. Diane revealed Maria's terrible death after she left Jebo to join her mother. Jack stated that they couldn't blame Maria for wanting to work with relatives. Diane suggested that now that Kyle had abandoned his plan to mislead Tucker, Jack could promote his son. Jack said, there's plenty of time for that. Diane was upset and petitioned for her son, emphasizing that Kyle had proven himself during the confrontation with Tucker. Jack dashed out the door while Diane pouted. Nick greeted Sharon in the jazz lounge, referring to her as the woman of the hour. Nick gave Sharon a bouquet of flowers from Faith and Noah. Sharon complimented the roses and mentioned that both of her children had called her earlier. Nick handed Sharon a nameplate for her desk that read CEO. Sharon said, I'm really doing this, aren't I? Nick gushed and told Sharon that he and their children couldn't be more proud. Sharon praised Maria and said she was fortunate to have her daughter on her team. Sharon recalled having a dream that helped her put things in perspective and that part of her dream had become a reality. Adam and Sally arrived to greet Nick and Sharon. Adam noticed Sharon's comment about dreams and wondered if the events theme could depict dreams coming true. Nick rolled his eyes. Sharon took a deep breath before greeting Adam and Sally. Sharon mentioned that Nick and Adam had been named co-CEOs at Newman Enterprises. Adam looked at Sally and remarked that he usually worked hard to acquire what he desired. Nick reminded Adam that the night was entirely about Sharon. Sharon thanked Adam and Nick for their early contributions to her company's goal. Adam noticed that Sally's design business was doing rather nicely. Sally responded, thanks to Nick's investment. Sharon informed Sally after Nick and Adam went to buy glasses of champagne that Adam was once again Sally's biggest fan. Sally admitted to being cautiously enthusiastic about their relationship, adding that the same could be true for Sharon and Nick. Sharon said that Nick was her date, and that he was always by her side when she needed him. Sally saw Nick smile at Sharon from across the room. Later, 
Adam and Sally sipped champagne and recalled running into Nick. Sally stated that Nick appeared fine when he ran into her and Adam on their way upstairs. Adam asked Sally how she felt about Nick seeing them in public. Sally drew Adam close and kissed him, saying, It's wonderful. Adam and Sally welcomed Chelsea and Billy. Adam informed Chelsea that Connor's grades had plummeted from all A's. Chelsea said that Connor was adjusting to his new school and needed time to regain his footing. Sally stated Connor was a wonderful child. Chelsea said that Connor was a fan of Sally. Adam observed that Billy had left Jibot. Billy remarked that his time at Jibot had been longer than Adam's. Adam boasted that he had become co-CEO of Newman Enterprises. Abby and Devin entered the jazz lounge, pausing at the bottom of the steps. Devin asked Abby who she was looking for. Abby said it could be awkward to run into Chance. Abby expressed confidence that Chance would not miss Sharon's big night. Devin looked around and stated he didn't see Chance. Abby felt perplexed over Chance's absence. Maria brought Sharon a glass of champagne and stated that Nick was out socializing with Muckety Mucks. Maria told Sharon to mingle before delivering her speech. Jack and Diane came. Jack kissed Sharon's cheek and congratulated her. Diane stated that Jabot might have problems replacing Maria. Jack applauded Maria's notion of sending digital invitations. Maria shrugged and asked, I mean, how are you going to launch a tech company with paper invites? Jack smiled and nodded. Jack greeted Chelsea and Billy, telling Billy that his new position appeared to be a good fit for him. Billy claimed he had no problems. Diane approached and, having overheard Billy, said, How nice for you. Abby and Devin joined them. Jack informed Devin that they had been discussing Billy's new job at Chancellor Winters. Devin noted Billy's quick start. Abby intervened, saying she expected nothing but success. Chelsea agreed. Diane expressed worried about Tucker's intentions with Jabot. Devin revealed that he was no longer speaking with Tucker. Jack recalled that Ashley thought Tucker's bond with Devin and Dom was his only saving grace. Devin stated that Tucker would need to save himself. Abby raised her glass, reminding her companions that it was Sharon's big night. Jack asked Chelsea in private how Billy was doing. Chelsea grinned and asked, You really love your brother, don't you? Jack believed Billy had taken a hasty decision based on his feelings for Jack. Chelsea acknowledged that she thought quitting Jabot had been beneficial for Billy. Jack was taken aback. Chelsea said that Billy was free to be creative on his own without seeking Jack's approval. Jack mentioned that spending time with Chelsea was beneficial for Billy. Jack and Diane spoke with Adam and Sally. Jack questioned the pair if it was presumptuous of him to believe Adam and Sally had found a way to work things out. Adam said that he and Sally were heading in the correct direction. Sally smiled. Jack appeared happy. Devin approached Tessa and Mariah across the room, asking about Aria. Maria reported that Aria was doing exceptionally well and that her hearing aids were functioning flawlessly. Tessa boasted that Aria responded every time she sang to her. Maria inquired about Dom. Devin stated that his son impressed him every day with something new he had learned. Abby accompanied Tessa, Maria, and Devin. Tessa inquired about Dom's music classes. When Maria and Tessa had to leave to attend to urgent business, Abby offered to send the information. Abby informed Devon that when Tessa mentioned Dom's music class, he felt uncomfortable. Abby asked Devon if Tucker had returned. Devon claimed Tucker hadn't, despite Devon's warning to keep away. Abby inquired whether Devon had made a face because he was disappointed. Devin said that he was not disappointed because Tucker had done precisely what was required. Sharon commended Nick for not reacting when Adam came with Sally as his date. Nick noticed Adam was in high spirits since he was back in Victor's and Sally's good graces. Sharon noted that Nick was on edge when confronted with Adam's friendship with Sally. Nick said that he feared Adam would ruin the relationship or do something to hurt Sally. Nick said that a happy Adam could stop from generating difficulties at work. Nick hoped he hadn't jinxed himself by wishing aloud. Sharon laughed. Maria drew the attendees' attention and introduced Sharon. 
After the crowd applauded, Sharon welcomed her guests and thanked them for their support. Sharon expressly praised Maria Copeland for organizing the occasion. Sharon also praised Nick Newman, stating that while he was no longer working with her, he had been instrumental in helping her achieve her objectives. Sharon stated that she would prefer not to recall how she came to acquire the corporation, instead saying that light can radiate from the dark. Sharon said, I am relaunching the company I inherited as a brand new venture. Sharon emphasized that her objective was to positively impact the world and that half of all earnings would go to issues near to her heart, such as raising awareness about underage alcohol consumption. Sharon mentioned that her daughter Faith had asked help with the cause. Sharon also identified Delia's foundation, New Hope, and the Abbott Winters Foundation as recipients of free software and technological support. Sharon revealed that she has renamed her company to reflect a change in its history. Sharon unveiled a poster featuring the company's name and emblem. Sharon shouted, I give you Cassidy first technology. Abby watched as Nick became emotional. Maria approached and embraced Nick. Sharon smiled at Nick and Mariah. Sharon later approached Devin and Billy and explained her latest dream. Sharon revealed that in her dream, Cassidy First had collaborated with Chancellor Winters, integrating their technologies and content. Sharon contacted Devin and Billy about forming a partnership. Billy stated he would like to hear more. Devin agreed that they were very intrigued and will schedule a meeting to discuss it. Sharon joined Nick while he was admiring the poster. Sharon asked Nick if he liked the new company name. Nick responded, I didn't expect to get teary-eyed at your cocktail party. It's perfect. The name represents your entire objective. You're creating something special. Sharon stated that she felt Cassie had been guiding her and that she was still a part of their life every day. Nick told Sharon that he had never been more in awe of her. Nick and Sharon stood together appreciating the banner advertising Cassidy First Technologies launch, which included the name and logo. Summer invited Phyllis to join her for a drink in society. Phyllis accurately assumed that Summer had chosen society to avoid Sharon's press gathering at the jazz lounge. Summer stated she did not want to run across some people. Phyllis assumed Summer was referring to Sharon and Chance. Summer stated she did not want to see Chance and Sharon at the party. Summer told her mother that Sharon had overheard Phyllis encouraging Summer to follow Chance. Summer saw that Sharon had maintained a cool demeanor throughout the humiliating circumstance. Phyllis emphasized that Sharon was uninterested in Chance, thus Summer should not give up her chance at happiness. Summer stated that she took a chance and invited Chance to lunch, but he declined. Phyllis refused to back down but Summer argued that she no longer wanted to cross lines and play dirty to achieve what she wanted because she had matured beyond such tactics. Phyllis insisted she would never regret pursuing her goals. Summer promised her mother that she would be all right alone until the right person came along. Christine arrived after Summer had departed and stared at Phyllis. Phyllis joined Christine in the bar and apologized for falling into her old habits after seeing Christine with Danny. Phyllis emphasized that she no longer wanted to be angry or aggressive, stating that she had told her children and Danny that she would change. Phyllis offered to make peace. Phyllis resolved to change Christine's impression of her. Christine boasted that she and Danny were going out to a cabin for the weekend. Christine lied, saying, It was his idea. He orchestrated the entire event. Christine believed that because Phyllis and Danny were so close, Phyllis would have known. Phyllis claimed she was unaware of the departure. Christine said that she and Danny needed to be away from distractions and focus on one another. Phyllis observed that Danny did not view her as a bothersome diversion. Christine claimed that Phyllis' statement demonstrated her efforts to mark her area, even if it was not hers to mark. Phyllis noticed that Christine continued to act as if she was superior to everyone. Christine responded, Definitely present company. After Christine left, Phyllis called Danny. Summer entered Crimson Lights and was astonished to see Chance alone at a table. Summer approached Chance and asked him what he was doing. Chance stated that he was reading materials relating to Chancellor Winters. 
Summer inquired about Sharon's launch party. Chance revealed that he and Sharon had broken up. Summer recalled that the last time she had seen Chance and Sharon together, their relationship appeared to be going well. Chance mentioned that he and Sharon had recognized they had different goals. Summer nodded sympathetically, saying, It still hurts, though. Chance agreed, saying he dreaded missing Sharon's launch party because he wished her nothing but success. Summer asked Chance to join her for supper. Chance smiled. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.